going to get into talking about semicrystalline and amorphous uh, polymers. So we're going to start off with the semicrystalline case, look at uh, crystallization, do some free energy calculations, of course, um, but then again, look at some properties and then get into amorphous polymers and how to distinguish between semicrystalline and amorphous polymers using a variety of different techniques. So DFC, XRD, and uh, PDFs, a lot of uh, cool techniques. So hopefully this will be a fun lecture and a little bit of a reminder from material science. So one quick thing is we use this term semicrystalline, and we're going to see in a bit that you can never have a polymer. A polymer can never be 100% crystal. Impossible. And again, usually there's, you know, metals are not 100%, you know, crystalline either, but I mean, there's defects, but pretty much they have, they're 100% crystalline <laughs> in reality. They have long range translational order, so LTO, long range translational order, uh, and they have short range order as well. They also have long range orientational order and other ones as well, but uh, this holds for metals. But polymers, while they will have short range order, the degree at which your long range translational order exists is going to vary. So you're not going to have as much. So that's going to be the key distinction between structurally between semicrystalline and amorphous polymers, or uh, polymers and metals and ceramics and other materials. But more on that a little bit later. So we're going to be talking about a lot of these kind of fun topics again long range order, short range order relaxation times, sphero lights, which are really cool pictures, um, chain fold lamella, which is basically ramyun. If you eat those, <laughs> if you eat ramyun, you should eat ramyun, but uh, uh, not too often. But anyways, uh, we're going to get it onto all that uh, glasses, glass transition temperatures, and some really kind of uh, fun behavior of polymeric materials that make it very unique. So this glass transition temperature, if I had to say one prop property of polymers that's the most important, it is TG. That is the most unique thing about polymers. Anyways, let's review a little bit before we get into this uh, for crystallization. So we just kind of talked about short range order, long range order. These should be concepts hopefully you remember from material science. Um, so we are going to be dealing primarily with semi-crystalline polymers. So they have semi-crystalline polymers will have some degree of long range translational order. So LRTO or long range order, uh, like metals, but not to the same extent. Um, and that is going to be a characteristic of, there's basically ordered morphologies at low temperatures. So polymers that are in a crystalline state are going to be highly ordered, and you're going to have basically alignment of chains that's stabilized by these intermolecular interactions. So your chain, instead of in the melt state, so when your T is greater than TM, it's going to look like this, just disordered mess. We know that from Florida Huggins. But when T is less than TM, and specifically when T is less than TC, your polymer is going to start to order. It is going to elongate and it's going to form these lamella chains that look exactly like Ramya. <laughs> so there are going to be some characteristic distance, some characteristic length of this, around, it could be around like 10 nanometers, um, hundreds of angstroms. So those are going to be some of the length scales that you might uh, kind of encounter. But anyways, uh, this is, again, entropically unfavorable. Uh, but it's going to be, again, we are going to form these uh, uh, we're going to extend this change. We're going to adopt this order structure because we're going to be able to enable these uh, important secondary intermolecular interactions. So back to our lecture one, H bonds. These can be van der Waals, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the closer they get, the you know stronger uh, they want to kind of pack together. So, but these bulky side groups could uh, basically prevent that. So there's going to be some push for crystallization or some for push to remain amorphous. So amorphous polymers will undergo to TG. They have short range order, for sure. All materials have short range order, even liquids and gases. But um, they will not have uh, the kind of the long range translation order that semicrystalline polymers have. So semicrystalline polymers crystallize low temperatures, have a melting temperature. So remember, semicrystalline have a melting temperature, amorphous, they just have a TG. But semicrystalline polymers will have a TN and a TG. We'll get into that uh, just uh, a little bit later. And again, our TG is always going to be below the melting temperature. So why do polymers uh, why do polymers want to crystallize in the first place? Like what's the what's the why do we want to you know crystallize? Go through this whole procedure. Why do we want to go from T greater than TM or TC in this state, T less than TM or T less than TC goes to this state? Well, it's because again, entropy versus enthalpy. We lose entropy here. Our delta S confirmations, configurations, decreases. But we gain, we have favorable 
enthalpic in reactions. So this uh, was going to decrease as well negative energies, so favorable because we have these interactions between our chains. Here, our delta S conformation is huge, but we don't have these favorable intermolecular interactions. So that is, again, the balance. So uh, we have a penalty for reducing entropy. And again, but that penalty is less. Again, this is basically a scalar multiple. That penalty is less at low temperatures. So we can stretch out that polymer chains. We can decrease conformational entropy if we're able to kind of gain in these enthalpic interactions. So nonspecific van der Waals dipoles or specific hydrogen bondings, all these different types of uh, interactions. So um, now the process of crystallization is one that's fairly complex, and we are going to dive into it because it depends on both kinetic factors and thermodynamics. So thermodynamics is a kind of confusing term because um, basically you could kind of imagine uh, thermodynamics has this term dynamics, and it kind of intuitively or the connotation is it tells you also something about the the speed at which an, uh, a material or a system will go into equilibrium um, but that's not the case thermodynamics just tells you uh, where what is the equilibrium state so i could tell you that you know a chain will either be disordered or it will be ordered thermodynamically at certain you know temperatures pressures and volumes i could tell you which state is in equilibrium but i can't tell you the speed at which, or the kinetics, or the process at which it will approach each of the either of these equilibrium states. That's where kinetics comes into play. So we have to study basically not only is this going to be this interplay between the thermodynamics of the system, where they want to be at, and the kinetics, how they will basically approach that state. Um, so this is a very very complex interaction because if you could imagine at these high temperatures, T greater than Tm, um, you're going to have polymer chains that are going to be highly intertwined um, because again. We have high entropy, our polymers want to wiggle around, and uh, they're going to be very, very flexible. So there's going to be a big kinetic barrier for the polymers to rearrange. So, you know, we can imagine we have to go from this kind of intertangled state and then unwind and elongate and fold and fold. So there's going to be this kinetic barrier. It's going to take some time um, for this to occur um, in order to get into this ordered state. And we're going to pay this entropic cost as well. So you're going to also see uh, that often, and actually the reason, one of the reasons why um, we can never have a fully crystalline polymer, 100% crystalline polymer, is when I'm in my melt state here, I can never approach a state like this, where my polymer is just, I have fully extended polymers here. Why not? Because that conformational entropy is so, it's such a huge penalty, we can never have a fully crystalline polymeric material. Instead, um, you're going to have this kind of kinetically trapped state where some of the polymers are going to be folded and ordered, like you can see here, but some regions are going to be more disordered because the chains can't diffuse, reptate, we're going to talk about this term a little bit. And in this kind of metastable state, there's going to be some like branches, there's going to be like, there's going to be like one lamella here, but then like a disordered region, and then, then another lamella right here, and then another disordered region, and then another lamella right here. So we're never going to have like basically this fully aligned equilibrium state. So it'll always be this mix of disordered, uh, in between regions of the crystalline and well-ordered chains. So we describe polymers in terms of the degree of crystallinity. So we never get to 100% crystalline, but if you have a polymer that's 90 to 95% crystalline, that is a very, 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 very crystalline polymer. Um, so those are kind of the ranges, and we'll actually see like LDPE uh, versus HDPE will have very different degrees of, uh, so like this could be, I think, around like 40%. I can't remember, we used to do these calculations, but this could be high density polyester could be like 60 to 70 percent, you know, percent. And again, that has to do with what we're going to see here, low number of branches here, high number of branches. So you can kind of imagine how that affects packing and the ability to form a crystalline region. Just to give an idea of the picture, this is kind of the picture we were talking about. So for polymer crystallization in the melt, at low temperatures, we want to, we would want to go to this state. But it's impossible. Why? Because of my delta S of conformation. It's too big of a penalty. We decrease it too much. This is going to be impossible to do. However, we can get to this state. Um, it's going to take some time because, again, there's an entanglement. Again, you could kind of think of your spaghetti when you're trying to pull out a single strand and then fold it. Um, so there's going to be some lamella regions. So here's a crystal. Here's a crystal. These are crystalline regimes. But everything else, I'm going to do a picture. This here this here and all these things that aren't in 
these are all basically glassy or rubbery, depending on your temperature. But really, they're amorphous regions. So you have this mix of amorphous material and crystalline regions right here. So crystalline. So that's the fundamental picture that we're going to kind of uh, talk about. And we're going to get into the thermodynamics and kinetics uh, and the morphology and the structure and the free energy description and what are the driving forces uh, all in this lecture. So that's coming up soon. So get excited for that. All right. See you all next time. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.